Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am bringing you news about Grenada Back to School 2020-2021 Schools reopened again in Grenada on the 7th of September 2020 after six months, even though they won't be any academic activities for the first three weeks. As we all know, due to the pandemic, the academic year is never going to be like the years before now. A lot of precautive measures will need to be taken in order to guarantee the health safety of the students, and teachers alike, in order to guard against community spread. Let's listen to the following message by, the Honorable Emmeline Pierre, Minister for Education, Human Resource Development, Religious Affairs, and Information, on the reopening of schools. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I greet you at a time when we are all affected by a global pandemic impacting the way that we live and function. Around the world, more than 25 million people have contracted the coronavirus, with close to 900,000 deaths. Although at home we have to be extremely grateful that we have had no deaths and only 24 individuals have contracted the virus. The last five months were extremely challenging for all of us as stakeholders in education. Looking back now, I believe we can all be encouraged by the words of the Holy Scriptures and I quote, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulations work at patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. I therefore express again my sincerest appreciation to all stakeholders, principals, teachers, parents, students, school managers, ancillary staff, the Grenada Union of Teachers, funding agencies, other government ministries, and staff at the Ministry of Education. The achievements that we had over the past period are testament not just to what we can accomplish in education reform, but they must also give us the impetus to continue pushing ahead with great excitement and passion, knowing that there is hope and that together we can create the enabling conditions for every child to succeed. To keep our children at home indefinitely is not an option we are prepared to consider at this time. But we need all hands on deck to make schooling happen for Grenada and for our children's sake. As we prepare for the start of the Michael Moss term, September 7th to December 11th, 2020, we know that as we journey, there will be challenges. We will need added wisdom, grace, and strength to succeed. But I encourage you, that is the Lord who goes before us, he will be with you. He will not leave you and he will not forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. This scripture has helped to shape the national theme for this school year. Trusting God, we will pursue our goals with determination. Every child can succeed. This will also be the theme for the hour of prayer which marks the start of every new term. The opening of school will be done in phases to ensure that we prepare our students mentally for the return to regular classroom routines. This staggered approach also makes provision for the engagements with parents, the collection of data to inform critical decisions assessment of students and a continued program for training, retraining and retooling of our teachers. During this term, we will also distribute devices to our teachers and students at the secondary school level 
to begin with. Therefore, within the first week of school, we expect only one grade or form to attend school on any given day of the week. Some secondary school principals will make some minor changes to the schedule for the first week due to prevailing circumstances and have committed to ensuring that all parents will be made aware of the school specific schedules. These schools are Wesley College, Anglican High School, St. Joseph's Convent Grenville, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, Grenada Christian Academy, St. John's Christian Secondary School, St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Grenada Seven-day Adventist Comprehensive School, and the Victoria School for Special Education. All other schools will use the national standard schedule during the first and second week. Thereafter, the school-specific plan will kick in. The plan for week one will be shared immediately after my address. The second week of school will mainly engage parents. This engagement is extremely important because parents will be provided with important information that will help them to better support their children in coping with this new normal. Additionally, some general information has to be collected from parents so that the school and the Ministry of Education can make important decisions to cater for all students at this time. During the second week, all students will remain at home except for special arrangements that a specific school may notify you of. The schedule for week two will be published on the Tuesday after school reopens, after everyone would have been clear on week one schedule. During the third week of school, students will be engaged in assessments. These assessments will be administered solely for the purpose of determining the academic needs of students. For these assessments, students will be provided with a schedule by their respective schools. Regular to normal teaching and learning activities are expected to commence in the fourth week of September. While I know that many are very anxious to return to academics, please note that the experts have advised against a rush to start these activities as a poorly timed process can have serious negative effects on a child. Again, we do not advocate rushing into academics, especially the first three weeks of school. But the focus then will be on orientation, sensitization, psychosocial support, and needs assessment. As we unfold this plan, there are three major challenges that we face. Limited finances, limited space, and the need to implement a blended approach. But we can overcome these challenges together. Despite a significant drop in revenue and the challenge of meeting its recurrent financial responsibilities, government has committed an additional $1.9 million just for additional support services and supplies for the next four months. This figure does not include the $50 million allocated for school repairs and 21 million already committed since the start of COVID-19 to cover e-learning activities, resources, and other support for schools. I therefore want to recognize and to appreciate the support of the Minister for Finance, the Honorable Prime Minister, and all my cabinet colleagues for their support in making this possible. 
Such investment in this very difficult times are indicative of the commitment of this government, our government, to the nation's children, our future. When these regular classes session resumes, some schools may be forced to do a blended approach, combining face-to-face -face and online learning. This may be necessary, particularly due to limited space. Although the National COVID-19 Committee has approved the three-fit physical distancing in the classroom, schools will implement it based on their level of comfort. Schools will employ their own strategies for blended learning as each school is indeed unique. The school's specific plans though must be approved by the Ministry of Education to ensure basic standards are maintained across the board. The protocol used in the last school term has been revised with very minor amendments and they are already shared with all of our principals. We expect that every parent and guardian will give their fullest support as schools seek to implement the protocol for their children's safety. One of the key responsibilities of parents is to provide a mask to every child to help with their protection. Supplies for cleaning and sanitizing will be provided both by the Ministry of Education and the school through the regular subvention provided by the Ministry of Education. However, I appeal to parents who are able to afford to also provide their children with at least additional hand sanitizers. Given the limited time for this address, I have selected some areas in which work has started and to which we will give extra focus in this new school term. They are not in order of priority. Improving partnership arrangements with key stakeholders. Improving efficiency and services to stakeholders. Support and recognition of outstanding principals and teachers. Improving school management by appointing managers and boards of management in every school. Improving standards of operation and accountability across the board. Expansion and strengthening of our values-based program. Curriculum reform and strengthening of the curriculum unit. Teacher education and in-service training. Improving student performance at all levels. Expansion of our skills training program based on industry demands. Strengthening of the special needs unit within the Ministry of Education. Auditing and restructuring of the student support services unit. Special intervention program for at-risk students. Special intervention program for five selected schools, secondary schools on island. Engagement and promotion of local authors. Finalizing of 12 policies and the regulations for the Education Act of 2002. And finally, review of the Education Act. So as I close, I encourage you, let us go forth, committing that those who come behind us will find us faithful. The words of one of my favorite songs ends with these profound words. After all our hopes and dreams have come and gone, and our children sift through all we've left behind, may the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. May all who come behind us find us faithful. May God bless us, may God keep us as we endeavor 
to start a new tomb, Michael Mus Tomb 2020. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. See you in my next video. Thank you.